they either don't know how to think or they haven't been following the news for the last couple of years, uh, certainly not the last year. Uh, whether it be the uh, uh, Asian, what they call the Asian economic flu, uh, following the, the, the currency collapse in Thailand, uh, which set off some reverberations or the default on the Russian debt, uh, which was a real setback to the world economy, or uh, the most serious, uh, a uh, you know collapse in uh, uh, the U.S. mortgage uh, market, which wasn't the cause, but it was simply the precipitate. It was something. It was the straw that broke the camel's back of a international tendency to greater, greater and greater debt. Uh, then you had a uh, uh, the, the world right now is in, in difficult economic shape. As you know, over the last 20 years, uh, Turkey has been a real star in the performance worldwide with, I don't know, I haven't looked at the statistics recently, but I would say averaging probably on the order of 6 to 7% of GDP growth. And, uh, and that's directly related to, uh, uh, well, many, many different things, but it's been a very strong performer. Uh, with a strong market economy and an entrepreneurial spirit and hardworking people, uh, which are the backbone and elements of any uh, economic, in the economy. But uh, there are, it is important for people to realize that it's not simply the laws that one company, a uh, country uh, passes or the economic, uh, or the, 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 the monetary policies of one central bank uh, right now in both the last administration and this, you are really seeing an unprecedented extent of international cooperation. And whether you like the direction of that or you think it's a different, should go in a different direction, at least we ought to acknowledge that we as human beings are making progress when there is true international cooperation. People say, oh, well, there's international cooperation, but then they would be sure to say, except for China, except for you know, now, no. You have a true broad-based international uh, cooperation in, involving, uh, you know, all the major economies uh, of the world. And of course, as we're dealing with the issue of, of pandemic flus, uh, you know, influenza and other diseases do not check in at borders. Viruses don't have passports, uh, and uh, uh, what could be a public health problem in one area, uh, could spread, and the answer is not simply to prevent travel everywhere at every time for everybody. Uh, that would be too great a cost. Uh, I foresee a day when, through economic cooperation, there is effective non-bureaucratic uh, world health, non-bureaucratic, effective uh, organization involving world health in which nations relinquish some degree of their desire to be in control uh, when, and, and allow uh, the top world medical practitioners to converge. Not just the people who study epidemics, but I'm talking about the, to converge and provide all the resources at the site so we try to quarantine diseases where they are rather than letting them spread and deal with them individually in the country. Do you see, see what I'm saying? But that will require some maturity and understanding of the interdependence of us all. That if there's an outbreak in China or Turkey uh, or the United States or Mexico, that that is something that should be de dedicate the resources. We've seen that in disaster response uh, over the last five or six years, have we not? We've seen it with the earthquakes, we've seen it with the, with the tsunami, we've seen it with the international response to Hurricane Katrina where people are realizing it. wasn't that many years ago where an earthquake quake kind of killed uh, three quarters of a million people in China, and yet it was considered by much an issue for China and China alone. Wherever something uh, might occur to that. I think we're we're growing up, and that requires some understanding. Uh, with that, I'd be uh, happy to take any questions, and, and I want to thank you for having me with you today. Anyway, let me ask.
ask you the first question. There is a swine flu outbreak. What kind, what kind of precautions is the city of Houston taking for its citizens? Um, the swine flu outbreak. Well, I give you a short answer and there's a longer answer. The short answer is that we are prepared every flu season, and I've been through some, where there has been flus, but they haven't sort of made the media to the extent that this, uh, this one flu has. Where uh, practitioners, physicians, advisories are put out uh, concerning the symptoms. Uh, symptoms are diagnosed by primary care physicians or of the individual or people in emergency rooms or specialists, whoever may be the first <coughs> physician. There are, is a testing protocol, nasal swabs, there's, there's some sample taken. Uh, then if there's a category that the case is put in in a classification uh, that comes to probable if you check off a certain number of symptoms, at the same time it reaches that category there are people within the city of Houston and other public health authorities, uh, epidemiologists who, who sort of interview the patient and try to determine who they came in contact with and where they've been for two purposes, both for determining the probability that the individual may have swine flu at that time and have been exposed, and also to understand who they were, who was exposed to that individual. Then. Uh, the test results are sent to the Center for Disease Control, the national ones, and it used to take them 48 hours, I think they're getting that a little quicker now, uh, to uh, decide whether the case is confirmed or not. Uh, this basic kind of information helps us, but ultimately uh, it relies, requires a lot of common sense and personal hygiene habits of people uh, who during the influenza season. Like, you know, this is not a person to the time to go 64 hours without sleep uh, or to, to become exhausted. Uh, the washing of hands, covering the mouth while cough or sneezing are, are the types of precautions. And if you do feel as though you have the influence of, there, there are antiviral agents, a couple of them, uh, that can mitigate, that can be prescribed, that can mitigate the effect of the swine flu. And I expect you will see that we will learn more and more on the coming days. Uh, it is, you know, this is not a media pronouncement, so I'm going to care. It is interesting uh, that uh, that the, the diagnosis has been to the bitty of confirmed cases in the United States, ages 49, 42 to younger. And so, you know, they're learning and testing. Is it possible? some say uh, that in 1976 there was something that looked like this that may have come through that has increased the immunity for some. So these are the types of things we will learn as we learn more about it. But we are prepared and uh, individuals have some responsibility to be prepared. So you recommend us to be cautious, not to be in panic? Yeah, I, I, I'd say, uh, you know, the President's word I think are appropriate to be alert and prepared but not alarmed or panicked. You mentioned education and higher education is one of your priorities. Yes. Um, well, I'm a professor at the University of Houston, yes. and there's a lot of talk in the legislature about tier one status and whatever. <coughs> um, what 